Rub up your engines! Mike Earl says, hey, Scotty, I love asking questions. Do you have to pour oil on the new filter when you change it? Some people say you should, but I don't see a purpose. Yeah, they really don't need it anymore. Ages ago, yeah. Filters today are not full flow filters. All the oil of the engine does not go through the filter and then back to the top of the engine. Only part of it goes through that. Part of it goes direct to the top of the engine. You don't need to do it. And in most cars, it would be patently absurd because many of the filters are either sideways or they're upside down. So if you put oil, them and you turn them up to screw them in it would all fall out anyways now if you're an absolute fanatic and you got an upside down one like on my triumph motorcycle go ahead pull it up with oil because it's screwing on the bottom and it's already full go ahead if you want to you don't have to but most cars they're either sideways or upside down it would all leak out by the time you screwed it in and make a mess so you don't need to do it it's an old wives tale that people used to do ages ago when vehicles had full flow systems and it would full flow through the filter so there'd be some air going to the system before it got filled up. But and think about it. If you got an upside down oil filter, right? Every time you shut the car off, the filter drains itself, right? So every time you're starting it, the filter's empty anyway. So fill it up with oil just for the first time you change that. It wouldn't make any sense because every time you shut it off, it empties too. So you don't need to. James Byrne said, how do you arrange to have a car inspected by an independent mechanic when you purchase a used car from a dealership? First, you got to find a mechanic, right? I mean, the people that know me, I just say, well, bring it over. I check it out. I don't charge anything. Check them out. I just check them out and help people out, make a video, show other people what to look for, what's good, what's bad, right? Now, you're not me, so... <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to find a mechanic somewhere. Problem is, you say it's at a dealership. They are often kind of leery about letting you drive it, but you find a mechanic, just flatline them and say, look, I got to take it to my mechanic to get it checked or I'm not buying it. And if they say, well, you can't drive it, say fine. The salesman can come with me and he can drive it. Let the salesman drive it to a mechanic. If they don't let a mechanic go to it, don't buy it from them, period. And if they say, well, your mechanic can come to the dealership to check it out, no, because we mechanics at our shop have all kinds of equipment. We can't bring it all when we go to test the car out at a dealership and they know it and they know something could be hiding and you might miss it because you're not in your own shop checking it out. So if they don't let you bring them, tell them, go someplace else. I'll go next door. They'll let me take a car somewhere. I got to have it checked out legally. I don't want to have some baloney be wrong because you don't let my mechanic check it out. If they don't walk, go someplace else. Bobby D said, what are your thoughts on plastic oil pans? Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts on plastic oil pans and they're all bad. What a cheap, crappy way to build a car. It's just so much cheaper to make a plastic pan than a metal one that that's what they're doing. And guess what happens when you hit something with a plastic pan? It cracks, it's gone, goodbye. A metal pan, they can often get dings in them and they still work okay. And even if you knock a hole in them, you can weld the hole shut. They're metal. Plastic, when it's gone, it's done and you got to buy another one. And they aren't cheap. They may be cheap to make, but they're not cheap to buy because they know who's going to be making a plastic oil pan. So the parts are going to cost you a small fortune. Oh, it's stupid. It's just stupid way. It's cheaper to make cars. That's all they care about. Make them as cheap as, and then they'll say, we're saving weight. Pick up a metal oil pan, pick up a plastic oil pan. They don't weigh that much different. The plastic has to be pretty thick so it doesn't break. And the metal can be pretty thin because it's metal and can take it. So it's just to make them cheaper. That's the only reason they make them. Silk and Juice says, what do you think of the new Prius? Well, I think it's pretty interesting, the new Prius, because the old one went zero to 60 in 11 seconds and this goes zero to 60 in like seven seconds so it's much faster than it was and they look better they don't look ugly and funky like the earlier Priuses do I'm not a hybrid fan because yeah they get good gas mileage but the technology behind them is insane and when it breaks it costs a fortune and it's a royal pain to figure it out and often you can only get the expensive hybrid parts at the dealer charge away too much money for the parts so I'm not a fan of hybrids but if I was going to get a hybrid I'd get a Toyota I don't think I'd get a Prius I'd probably get a Camry hybrid. Guy brought me one the other day. It was six months old. Beautiful. Got 47 miles a gallon driving on a highway and 50 something in town. And it was a Toyota Camry. And it ran great. So that's what I'd get if I was going to get it. Canadian Eight says, do I drain my oil before putting ATS chemical 505 in the oil to flush it out? You're putting in that bottle, right? And it's not a good idea to overflow a system. So if you want to be a fanatic, you could get a suction machine, stick it in the oil dipstick and suck out the same amount. Let's say it's got 12 ounces, then you could take 12 ounces out. Whatever's in the bottle, just suck that same amount out and then put that in. And then you're going to only run it for like 
15, 20 minutes, and then change the oil and filter. So it's such small bottles. In that short run, it probably wouldn't hurt anything, but just to be a fanatic, I'd say take out the same amount. Check the dipstick first, make sure it's full. And if it is full, take out the same amount that's in the bottle and then pour the bottle in. Free Canal says, can I use anti-seize on wheel studs sparingly? I'm talking about old rusted studs, not pretty zinc play one. You got old rusted stud, go ahead and put some anti-seize on it. You know, that'll help. It'll keep it from corroding on it. Just make sure you torque them all tight enough. The new stuff, you don't want to because when it's all coated and stuff, it creates a problem. The same thing with spark plugs. Most of the modern spark plugs, if you look at them, they're all anodized on and they already have a coating on the threads. You don't put anti-seeds. If you do, they might loosen up because that on top of that, you might end up torquing them on and they actually might not stick on better and they'll pop out if you're driving a while from being too lubricated. So, nah, on the spark plugs and new ones, most of them, you don't need to put anything on the spark plugs. But on old rusted studs, sure, just make sure you torque them up. Get a torque wrench, make them nice and tight. Radzlevig says, Scotty, why don't you like Subarus? They seem to have a lot of problems, but they regularly go 300,000 miles. If they're bad, why do they go so far? Well, because people put money fixing them. Now, the thing is, some of the Subarus are nice. Guy brought me one the other day. It was one of those wilderness ones, right? And uh, it was nice. Now, I paid a lot of money. It did have a turbo. The engine will wear out faster. But the main reason I never liked Subarus was because their automatic transmission stunk. I rented one when I went to Moab, Utah like five years ago, and it was already slipping. It only had 1,500 miles on it. I didn't like their CVT transmissions. I didn't like the regular automatic transmissions either. But now they've got some deals going on with Toyota and the CVT transmission and the guy's brand new one actually work quite well. And the guy, it takes it off road too. So they are making them better than they used to. But that's the reason I didn't like them overall because they had too many transmission problems. A couple of decades ago and back from then, they blew a lot of head gaskets because they didn't make the head gaskets on the box or engines, right? But they don't do that anymore. You don't have to worry about that. With the fours, the sixes, yeah, I would not buy a Subaru six. But the fours are pretty bulletproof now. Aiden says, my Tesla Model 3 is smoking a lot. Any help? Well, what's smoking? It doesn't have an internal combustion engine. You got some kind of electrical problem and it's creating smoke. Get it fixed before it starts on fire and burns you down to the ground. <laughs> Their quality control is low, but I'm assuming you're making a funny post that, gee, my Tesla's smoking, it's burning oil. Well, it doesn't have an engine to burn oil, right? But now if you are serious, if it is smoking, one thing you would look at is the cooling system. They're just like gasoline cars. They have radiators and fans to cool the battery system, the generator system, all that electricity, they get hot. So they have a cooling system. Instead of cooling an internal combustion engine, they're cooling down electric motors and electric batteries. As they discharge and charge up, they get hot and they got to cool. And if that cooling system has a problem, it'll start smoking, just like if your car smokes when your radiator starts to get a leak in a gasoline car. So you might check that if you're not pulling some kind of joke. <laughs> Carolina says, should I get an OEM serpentine belt or gates? I'm replacing the belt in 2011. Taco, 105,000 miles. Thanks. But the gates are fine. I got gates on mine. Never had any of them break, you know? Gates has been building belts for a long time. All of my Toyotas and Lexus in the driveway have gates belts on them. I never had one break. I just replace them when they start to crack. And the last one lasted like 14 years. So I got to say, I'd stick with the gates until they start making them crappy if they change. But they haven't yet. Argy says, if you were given a modern car for free, would you keep it or sell it? Well, I'd keep it because if I sold it, you got to pay the tax on all that stuff. <laughs> And it would depend what it was. What I would like is somebody to give me an electric car, and then I could just honestly test it out for people to tell them the truth. But so far, none of the electric car manufacturers have offered, other than a Korean company that doesn't import their electric cars yet into the United States when they do, they said they'll give me one to try out. So then I'll be gladly trying them out. You know, I would like to try one out. I'm sure as heck not going to buy one, but I'd love to try it out. Honestly, I got three chargers for them from various companies. <laughs> I just don't have any cars to plug them into because nobody's going to give me one. So if anybody out there wants to give me an electric car to honestly test out, feel free to contact me. Tom K says, Scotty, are using fluid film or other oil-based corrosion protection a good idea for a 10-year-old car driven in a rust belt with existing frame superficial rust? Okay, if you want to, first get yourself a drill or whatever and a wire brush and get most of the superficial rust off and then put films on it. Yes, it is a good idea up there. Now, if you're lazy, you just want to spray it on, go ahead, but the rust is there and it'll continue to rust somewhat. You better to get the superficial rust off first and then coat it. And I know lots of guys up in Boston that they get big giant cans, big giant ones, and they spray them all the time and it does keep them from rusting and corroding quite a bit. It, it does work. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!